Coming up tonight, the Seaside Seas of Fort as we arrive in San Juan. We head back to South Beach and Gene tells us a lie. It's all coming up, so let's set sail. <laughs> Welcome to day number three of the cruise view from on board the MSC Seaside. Today was Sunday, November 26, 2018, and it's a little bit of an odd day. Pretty much a sea day, but also a port day. Our noon location was 19 degrees and 20 minutes north by 67 degrees and 11 minutes west. And that was our location at noon, but our actual location for the day was San Juan, Puerto Rico. Our port call for the day, the first stop on this seven night sailing to the Caribbean. But it was mainly a sea day because we did not even start to arrive to San Juan until the day was pretty much over. We started to make our arrival at about 4.15, passing the fort, and we ultimately docked at 4.55, just in time for our five o'clock arrival as scheduled. When we arrived, Equinox was already there, so once again, she will be with us almost every day, including tomorrow, and she arrived prior to us at 3.30, and then she departed tonight at 11 o'clock. Starting the departure process at just at past 11 and taking about half an hour to get out of there. For us, the all aboard time was 12.30 with a scheduled departure of 1 a.m. At 12.40, just a couple minutes past the all aboard call, we ultimately started to depart, so 20 minutes early. And we're ready at the fort by about 1, 1.05 a.m. and headed to clear seas by 1.15 a.m. So it was a port day, but sea day. So with the weather today, we had a sunrise at 6.52 a.m. this morning and a sunset at 5.46 p.m. According to the planner, once again, the high was listed as 90 degrees. Not sure if that's accurate or not. It was definitely, once again, a hot day. Definitely up in the 80s. 90s seems a little bit high for what it was, but it could have gotten there. And we had partly cloudy skies, just a few clouds sprinkled throughout, but nothing major. While at sea, we had a relative wind speed of as high as about 20 knots. While when we docked, it dropped to about nine knots, and tonight it was almost completely still before we left. While at sea, our seas were perfectly smooth once again today. It was a beautiful sea day for the first half of the day with smooth seas, those blue skies, absolutely beautiful day out. And of course, that meant that most people did take advantage of the pool decks and they were once again packed, just like we saw yesterday. So moving on to our daily planner, Started out early this morning at 10 a.m. with the captain's Q&A session. This took place in the Metropolitan Theater and featured the captain along with a few other officers of the ship going through some behind the scenes areas, including the engine room as well as the bridge, and then ultimately ending with the traditional question and answer session where pastors get to ask anything they want to know from the captain and his officers. And then, as I mentioned, almost everybody was up on that pool deck and at 11.30 a.m. today we had the King of the Seas took place up on the Miami Beach pool deck and it was hybrid once again. We've seen some other game shows kind of hybrid existing ones and this one was once again a hybrid. It featured a starting point of essentially the Sexiest Man competition.
but then went into a series of physical challenges to ultimately crown one person the king of the MSCC side. And that about did it today. Once again, it was a very empty daily planner for our sea time. And that really was about all there was today leading up to our dinner. We, of course, arrived docked at 5 o'clock. Dinner was 5.30 p.m., so a half hour later. And this, once again, was a complete mess. We saw yesterday some issues with dinner, and today was no exception. With the arrival at 5 o'clock, that meant that things were backed up. They were not organized to get people off the ship, and all the stairwells were basically backed up, backed up right into the entrance of the dining room areas, making it almost impossible to get to the dining rooms. But in addition to the departure, the people headed off to the shore, backing up into the ship. The dining room itself didn't open until 10 minutes later, so they have a rule around 15 minutes late and they lock the door, and you are not allowed to enter, but they were 10 minutes late in opening the doors today. Then once they did open those doors, they were operating in an open seating manner, so that meant we did not get our usual table, we did not get our normal wait staff, we were assigned a random table in the dining room, and it appeared that anyone could show up at any time to eat rather than having to stick to their traditional time slots. But without taking a look at the daily planner and noting that they've changed the dining setup to list the Ipanema restaurant as open sitting 5.30 to 9.30 with seashore from 6 to 10, and my choice dining in the seashore from 5.30 to 9.30, you would have no idea that they changed things up because it's dinner. It's supposed to be the same time every day at the same table, standard tradition, and apparently that is not the case here. They do whatever they feel like whenever they want, something we've kind of seen a lot. It really feels a bit chaotic and at times out of control, like they really don't have plans around the way they do things. They just kind of wing it as they go along. We know the menus they don't have available ahead of time either. I checked yesterday and even just an hour and a half before dinner time, they still had no idea what was going to be on the menu. So a lot of the stuff around here really doesn't seem to be well thought out and it's certainly not well communicated. We of course had that, our first port of call today in San Juan and there is not a single announcement made about anything. No announcement that we were docked, no announcement they could be cleared to go ashore. There was absolutely nothing, once again, nothing about our departure, no information about tomorrow when we'll arrive. There is absolutely zero information really given to anyone about what is going on on board. And that makes it a bit difficult because they are not consistent with almost anything they do. They really do wing it through everything they have going on here. But back to that dinner session. It was a Greek themed menu today and for starter I got an item that I'm not even going to try to pronounce but it was zucchini and feta cheese fritters with a cucumber yogurt sauce and it was delicious. It was two little zucchini fritters along with a little cup of cucumber yogurt sauce and it was presented nicely on a plate and it tasted absolutely delicious. It was a great appetizer. And then from there, for my entree, I went with the penny pasta with vodka, which came with grilled chicken and a creamy pink vodka sauce. They also had penny vodka at lunch today, and unfortunately that meant the same meal for lunch and dinner, since we did not know what the dinner menu would include. But it was actually a little better at the lunch one, and lunch one was served a little more like a, a baked penny pasta with some cheese melted on the top, whereas the dinner one was really just some sauce and pasta thrown in a bowl, so it really wasn't anything extra presentable for something being served in a main dining room. And then for dessert, I went with another one of the Greek items, the Galactoboreco, which was a Greek custard pie. It was basically a piece of pie that was very eggy, almost like an egg custard pie. And then I also went with the brownie stack, which was two layers of brownies with some cream in the middle, and it was served with some ice cream on the side as well. Following dinner, we then headed ashore, 
went off the ship and it was a once again confusing mess to get off the ship there really isn't any logic to how they handle this it was there were signs pointed in all directions saying entry exit in the same exact direction it really made no sense and the entire area that you used to get on and off the ship was crew areas so it was certainly not an area that is typically guest presentable and even the area to actually exit the ship where you would go through the door and get to the ramp where you would swipe the card they had ropes set up that basically divided and they were using the same exact aisle for both, both arriving and departing so as you walked, you hit random blocked off areas. It was really just confusing mess trying to get on and off. And there wasn't enough room really to handle the people that were going through because as people were trying to get on, they were in the way of the people trying to get off. So it really was not well organized at all. And it didn't seem like it was a case of Puerto Rico. It seemed like it's just a very poor setup on the ship. We'll see how it is in St. Thomas tomorrow. But today did not look like there's any promise to smooth port days from the way it seemed. While in Puerto Rico though, we just took a quick walk up and down the road, get some nice shots of both the Celebrity Equinox and the seaside all lit up at night. And we no longer have that full moon, but it is still a fairly full moon and it's certainly still bright out there. So it was a beautiful sight to see these two ships light up. But we did have to get back on board after a little while because at 9.15 we had our production show for the night, My Life in Music. And this, once again, was a different style of production show. This one was pretty much a classic Italian opera. A lot of really impressive singing once again in this one. The singing on board this ship has really been the, probably the most impressive part of these shows. They have an absolutely incredible set of singers on board. And along with that, they did have the dancers as usual, but there was one scene that involved some ropes hanging from the ceiling through a little bit of an aerialist act in the middle of the show as well. After that concluded in the Metropolitan Theater, I then headed over here to the atrium. The activities staff put on a country moment, one of those moments once again that they have to try to bring the theme of the night into the atmosphere of the ship. This one is kind of an interesting one, a country moment. You'd expect it to be country music, country style. But leading up to the event, they had music like the remix version of ABBA songs. And then the actual moment event itself had some country music, but for the most part was remix country music, very pop and high energy versions of country songs rather than that traditional country music you'd expect. <laughs> And then just after that it was back to the Metropolitan Theater for the Liars Club game with Beer Prov and Beer Prov once again absolutely hilarious. In addition to Beer Prov it included Gene the cruise director as well and it was absolutely hilarious. The whole Beer Prov team is absolutely hilarious so much better than I think any of the comedians that I've ever seen guest on a ship. And that says a lot because those are professional comedians that are brought on specifically to do shows. That is pretty much all they do is travel from ship to ship getting hired and you have to be doing something right to get a ship to hire you and choose to fly you out to the ship to perform. But these people are on board the ship all the time, every sailing, and they're a part of the seaside itself. They're a part of the crew, the cast, They are always here they're in the fabric of this ship and they put on a better show than i think any of the actual comedians it's improv a lot of people don't think of that as comedy but they are absolutely hilarious and unlike most of the comedian routines that we see on the ships these are 100 percent original and on the spot making them completely off the wall and out of control which is always hilarious to watch so this time it was the Liars Club game, and that was basically three of the members of Beer Prov, along with Gene, sitting as contestants and different characters, along with one member of the Beer Prov team as the host of the game show. They put a word up on the screen, and each of the four contestants would have to go through and 
explain what that word meant. And then once they were all done, which usually involved a lot of hilarious stories and weird anecdotes, it would then come down to the audience voting on which of the answers is believed to be the correct definition of that word. Once it's been determined who the audience picked, we find out what the real answer was, and if the audience is right, they get a point. Otherwise, the beer prof team gets a point. And tonight, the score unfortunately ended with beer prof three and the audience two. So we did lose, but it was an absolutely hilarious show as the beer prof events are. And looking at some of the things in the app, they do have their family, their adult shows, and this Liars Club game, but I don't think they have any more events, unfortunately. So I will definitely be heading back for their other standard comedy shows, but I think that may be the only things that are left are those two adult shows that remain. What do you got for us? This is unacceptable. I agree. <laughs> this is completely unacceptable. First, he imprisons all of you poor comedians and forces you to tell lies to the passengers who are paying good money to be here. Mm. Lie to their faces. Unacceptable. Hey. And then, and then, above all, to say this word in front of everyone, I am so sorry. You are not supposed to know about this. Hey, no <gasps> hey. you want a treat? What do you have? You want a treat? What do you have? You want a treat? What do you have? You want a treat? A little key treat? Make you feel better? Uh, oh, I can smell it. I don't want it. Yeah. I I can smell it. Listen, you are not supposed to know this name. The Nomen is. There's a reason we don't have a floor 17. Oh. <laughs> There's a reason. The Nomen is an, is, a, is an Italian ghost who haunted, who haunted the ship so badly during its first week that hundreds of people died and had to be put in the Zumbara. And we do not say its name, and it is a real, it's really disgusting that we have to talk about it now. I am putting this all in the report, and you, Genia, are under investigation. That's fair enough. So that is a Italian ghost. <laughs> Great. After that, I then headed up to the top deck to watch the Celebrity Equinox depart, and at the same time, at 10.30, they had video music concerts, Celine Dion, Eyes of the World. All night, they've been playing music documentaries up on that big screen above the Miami Beach pool. The other night they had One Direction, other times they put movies, they use that screen for all different kinds of entertainment purposes at night. But that led up to our departure then, and following that it pretty much was the end of the night. This ship really does go to sleep at about 11 o'clock each night. There are people around, but the activities really stop once 11 o'clock hits. But for tonight's venue tour, we're going to look at some of the more exciting venues, a little more of the party atmosphere venues as we take a look at the South Beach area as well as some of the entertainment activities around that section. After the atrium on deck 7 is the party area of the MSCC side. On the starboard side is the arcade area featuring an interactive XD cinema along with a Formula One motion simulator. Guests can also go bowling with two full-size bowling alleys on board. Just past there is the Garage Club, offering a classic vibe that harkens back to the days of Route 66, complete with a DJ booth built right into a classic car. This venue serves as the ship's main disco and has access directly to the South Beach pool area. This adult-only pool has expansive views of the wake beyond the ship during the day, creating a quiet place to rest. While at night, the inclusion of a DJ area turns it into a second nightclub. Continuing forward on the starboard side, you pass through the ship's library and billiard room before reaching the Haven Lounge. This multi-purpose space is the most heavily used venue on board, featuring everything from game shows and lectures to live bands and parties. So that is one of the signature areas of this ship. That is the iconic stern of the seaside. That is what she is known for. That is the feature 
that you can spot from miles away when you see the ship. It's very obvious it's a seaside when you can see that stern because it is a very different design than others. Almost everybody else has a slant now, whereas she has a very vertical stern. So you can definitely see her from a long distance away and know for sure who you're looking at. Now for our interview tonight, I sat down with Gene, the cruise director, to discuss his role on board. Kind of a spiritual herbal. It's, it's kind of a way, a way, a way from modern medicine, in any way, to feel yourself in a spiritual or an herbal or an earthy kind of way. Today I'm joined by Gene, the cruise director on board. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, nice to see you, Derek. Could you provide a little bit of background on yourself? Again, my name is my name is Gene Young. I come from Utah. Um, I've been at sea for almost almost uh, 25 years now. Um, I was a singer before I was a cruise director. Did quite a bit of singing at sea also, and uh, now I'm now I'm the cruise director, the entertainment director of uh, MSC Seaside. So, what led you to pick a life at sea? Um, it was a, uh, starting at sea or being an entertainer at sea was a very easy decision. It's such a, it's such a neat option for anyone, uh, anyone uh, starting out in the business. Um, financially, it's a, you know, I mean, it's very profitable to be an entertainer at sea, or it was whenever I started. Um, I'm quite, quite a bit older than, than the, the, uh, the young people that are, that are entertaining now. Uh, but whenever I started, it was, it was just really a, a very, uh, a very aggressive way, aggressive way to take a step forward financially. And in the entertainment business, there were a lot of connections to be had uh, at sea. And I actually started working for a different company, a different company there, progressed there. And then, then once once I progressed to a point where I was I was happy with it, I, I swapped over to management, and that's that's how I became a cruise director. So, as a cruise director, how is your contract organized? How long are you on board these ships for? For for me specifically, uh, because of because of MSC Seaside, this is their first American market ship, and I am their first American cruise director for their American market ship. Um, I do about four months on, and I take four weeks off. Okay. Four months on, four weeks off. But but that is that that wouldn't be um, you know as far as uh, as far as other cruise directors, it's not really a shell that you could compare to. A lot of people have a lot of different times at sea. So yeah. up to your needs, up to your wants, up to the the business's needs. <laughs> So what are your duties on board? What are you responsible for here? I, you know, I'm uh, the cruise director. Again, the tra tradition uh, dictates that you oversee uh, the entertainment, uh, the, the guest satisfaction of entertainment on board, the flow of traffic. Uh, you are the face of the ship. You are the uh, the advertiser, and the, the uh, and the next door neighbor. So, um, again, overview of all the the entertainment uh, brand brand recognition. And uh, making sure that everyone has a good time. Somebody, somebody's job to take a look at the big picture. Yeah. And now, now I have assistants that take a look at the small picture. You know, I have, I have an assistant cruise director uh, that uh, that does a lot of the administration work, so that the cruise director, so that I can be out with with the guests, make sure that, that I understand what they want, how you know how their experience is going. Um, I have an activities manager, uh, Candice, who is uh, who is wonderful. She's from the. England. She handles all of the all of the activities here on board, and she's the front of you know the front person for the you know for the dancing, for the parties, for all that activity. I'm a little, I'm too old for that now. <laughs> so. <laughs> so the Seaside is the first American market ship, but MSC as a whole is a very international audience, and even the Seaside still gets international audience. It does. How do you cater to such a diverse group of passengers? Again. Um, Look, looking at it in a, in a different kind of way, uh, you know, the, I, I am myself. I present, I present in English. Uh, we have, uh, I have staff members to accommodate to those those that uh, that need different languages here on board. The Seaside is an American market ship. Uh, the the language on board is English, and so I am myself. I do I do uh, I do what I what I do for all of our guests, and we're very successful at that. Mm -hmm. So the Seaside is a very different ship than not just the rest of the MSC fleet, but almost any other ship out there. How do these differences kind of change the way you do, and what kind of benefits do you have with the Seaside? The Seaside is, again, I, you, you said it just right, and actually today is the birthday of MSC Seaside, so she's one year old today. And different is the word that I would use, not only in concepts, not only in construction, uh, but feeling on board, this is a different way of doing things. This is a, a Mediterranean feel, large construction, large ship, small venue. Uh, and I mean, I think, the, I think it's only benefits. I mean, there are no challenges when it comes to a beautiful ship like this. People want something different. In a world that is flooded with mediocrity and, and similarities, 
you put a ship like this out that is completely different, the feel that is different, especially to the American market, and, uh, and we have something very special on board. And again, the, the, and you, if you look at the success of Seaside, I would equate it to that, uh, that it is, it is just a new and a fresh, nuovo way of doing things, and different to what people, people are expecting and different to what people are traditionally used to. Uh, and so I, I, find it, I find it very refreshing, just very exciting to be on board in that way. And so as far as, again, as far as being different, as, uh, as far as being different in, in every way, it is just a bonus for us because we, there's, no, there's no need for a selling point. The ship sells itself. Yeah. She's, you know, she's a modern marble in a different kind of feel, a different kind of way. And people are looking for that. Mm -hmm. So we're happy about it. So the seaside is that first big push in the American market. So in terms of content activities on board, how much support do you get from the corporate side versus how much are you really kind of going at this on your own and charting new territory? I think 100% we get, we get support. You know, we have a, um, you know, we have a world recognized brand. And so going out on, on my own, I, I wouldn't, you know, I would never phrase it that way. I would say that, I would say as the, the first American Marriott ship, first American cruise director for this market, uh, we, have a, we have a wonderful exchange of ideas and enrichment for the guests. But MSC, set, you know, MSC has a very successful enrichment program, a very successful uh, uh, planning program, daily program for the guests. Uh, you know, this is their first American market ship, but they're not yeah. their first American experience. They've already, you know, they have years of experience of being successful in the American market. And so, um, you know, small moves. Small moves, I would say, uh, from from the team on board. But MS, MSC already has a very strong base, a very strong foundation for us to stand upon. Fair enough. Right. Yeah. Now there's the production cast, but you also have something unique to the Seaside MSC, and that is a team of comedians on board, improv artists with beer prop. Can you speak to that a little? Yeah, you know, again, when when you look at the programming on board, we wanted something different, something that something the guests. Uh, could get excited about in a lot of different ways. One, they do they do an adult show in the evening time a few times. They also do family shows a few times. So we can we can cater to everyone looking for whatever experience they want. It is an improvisational show, so it's not these you know these tired stand-up comedians, the you know, comedians that everyone knows all of their jokes. I they mean, they're, I mean they've been passed around different criticisms. No, this is something again new. The show is designed to evolve toward the audience, yeah. and I find that very I, th I find that very exciting. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have a different audience. A totally different show, so the guests can guests can experience something new every single night, and they get they get their experience they want. They want a family experience. They want they want a rated R experience. They can have that also. Right. So, what is next for you? Where are you headed next? I'm, I am here. Mm -hmm. I am here. You know, I I, ret I retired from a different uh, from a different company. I was there for quite a while, almost 20 years, and uh, and so this is this is a relatively a new experience for me to be with MSC. But again, I I find it different. I find it exciting to be here. I I find the the family aspect of the you know of the company, including all of my staff, including all of the all of my directors, my managers here on board. I find it very exciting to be a part of something like this. So if they'll have me, I, you know, I, I, uh, I plan on being here for a while. Mm -hmm. And so specifically on Seaside too, you know, I, I would, uh, I, I hope, I hope and I'm planning on being here uh, for the, for the, well, the years to come, yeah. shall I say. <laughs> All right. So anything else that you'd like to tell the viewers? You know, I'd, I would, uh, I would say this, I would say to, there are two different, two different groups of people that I normally talk to and, and, and emphasize my passion towards. One being our guests. And again, I think you said it just right, Derek, uh, that, that MSC is a different kind of experience for the American baby boomer. Uh, it, is, it is something fresh, it is something new. It is something that no matter where you're coming from in your experience, whether this is your first cruise or whether you've been on a hundred cruises, this is something you want to see. Uh, you know the price range. The price is so very competitive. Why not? Why not give it a chance and try? Uh, we have the highest rated entertainment that I've ever seen on any cruise ship in the world. And so, if you're again, if, if you're coming just for the entertainment, we we can knock your socks off. We can show you something that you've never seen before, and I think that's very impressive. The culture on board is different. It's yeah. romantic. <laughs> You know the ship is the ship is built so that again five thousand people can be here on board, but you and I can be sitting in a you know in a small cafe with a with a Mediterranean feel, uh, you know, and, and still feel like you know we, we are we are not we are not swarmed by you know by thousands of people. We can have an intimate moment if we'd like. Also, I also so I, that would be to, to the guests to the guests that we uh, that we would like to attract. As far as as far as uh, people. Uh, that are interested in employment at sea. I would say to them too, you know, it, it is a, it's a family owned company. It's the, the largest privately owned shipping company in the world. 
comes from a, comes from a very respectable, a very loving and warm history of family, and I think that's that that's that is a different way of doing things. I left my previous company because I, I was tired of being a number. Mm -hmm. And if, if you are tired of being a number, you want to be somebody, you want to have a real face, you belong to a family and not a computer, I would take, I would take it to that step further and say, try, try MSC. See if, see if it fits in your plan, see if, you, see if you're looking for something different, something new, and something you feel comfortable with, to belong to a family, and an exciting one yeah. so that has, a, that has a, a vast future. And so that's about it. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Derek. So, as always, got to thank Gene for taking the time to talk to me. Of course, he was in that beer prov liars game tonight, and absolutely hilarious, along with the rest of them. We haven't seen the cruise director as much on board this ship as we do the Royal Caribbean ones, but he does still have a major role in running the show and everything that is going on around here. So, that about wraps up today, but tomorrow... We are once again in port with St. Thomas. It is currently about 2.30 in the morning. We just got away from San Juan and in less than five hours, we'll already be docked in St. Thomas. We are scheduled to arrive at 7 a.m. for a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. very unusual 12 hour long port day. And that means very short sleep night, but there should be more things to see tomorrow. But first, I am Derek Cohn. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the links.